I've been waiting quite a long time to get my hands on one of these. This comes from VW Loose Nuts. Specializes in making safari kits for air-cooled beetles and buses. I think he has bus stuff. Um, specializes in safari kits for air-cooled cars. So windshield kits and side pop-outs and he was making rear pop-out safari kits for square backs. I don't know if he's, I think he's stopping with the type 3 stuff, at least with the windshields because the, it's just too much to work with with the curve on the windshield. But anyways, um, Jeremy came out with this about a year or two ago. I wanted it right away because I've always wanted some kind of ventilation for the back window, but I don't like the slider window. And outside of that, there just wasn't any any options. I'd, I'd rather keep the solid window than change it for some kind of ventilation. But lo and behold, Jeremy came out, came up with this. Best of both worlds, get to have that solid back window while still getting some extra ventilation. So all said and done, this came to my door, 630 bucks, which can be argued that it's quite a lot of money for what you're getting. Uh, essentially, you're just getting the frame, the hinges, the latches, and the rubber seal. If you want to be nitpicky, yes, it's a lot of money for the amount of stuff you're getting. But there's nobody else making it, for one. That's the biggest part. There's nobody else making it, okay? Even if somebody else decides to start, oh, I can make that no problem, they don't have a background in, you know, safari kits, you know. With making windows that aren't supposed to swing out, swing out. So, first and foremost, there's nobody else making this sort of thing at all right now. Secondly, uh, Jeremy takes great, great pride in his work and it shows with the following he has in the air-cooled world, the amount of respect he has in the air-cooled world, and just with the amount of his kits that are out there on cars. I've seen them on multiple bugs out here on the East Coast, and you see pictures of them all the time. He stands by his work. If there's ever an issue on his end with the product, he says it right on his website. You can go look it up. He stands by his work. That being said, there is also three month waiting period on this one. Um, it always varies. You'll see he opens and closes his orders. Can't blame him. He works a full-time job. He has a family. He has other hobbies. This isn't his main source of income. But all in all, 630 bucks. three months later, it's here. Every time I'd have the money stashed aside to spend on it, I'd ask him, hey, you taking orders? No, I'm not taking orders. Anyways, long story short, I was finally able to put my order in uh, three months ago. And here it is. These are way smaller than I thought they were going to be, which again is a great thing because the there is not a ton of room in the pickups to begin with, especially back there to go cramming all this in. Great. These locking latches are great. Very cool. Very glad to see how tiny they are. VWLooseNuts.com Here's all the rubbers. I'm not gonna lay it all out, but I'm not the least bit worried about how this stuff is gonna hold up. Yeah, this is the real deal right here. All right, so this is the hinge that gets screwed to the top of the cab. All right. Yeah, so you can see the, uh, you can see where he spot welds it. You can see on the other side, great penetration on the welds. I don't want to get super nerdy here about this all, but you can see what you're getting. You can see how, you can see the quality and the, you know, the welds look great. You've got a nice rubber gasket that goes between. Definitely gives you a very nice something, something, can't English. We're gonna do full install, the same video, you're gonna see that in a bit. 
I didn't order the chrome finish. There's an option for another 100 and or 150 bucks, something like that. Don't quote me on it. You gotta go on his website and see. But this is the option to get if you want to finish it yourself, if you want to powder coat it, want to chrome it yourself, or whatever you want to do. I feel like that's what this is intended for. Slapped it together just to see what everything was like. Um, there's one thing I want to point out. One, uh, I see it as being a very good thing. Others might not be a huge fan of it. The unfinished raw version. And that's exactly what you get. Um, unfinished, unpolished, raw. You're gonna see imperfections in the material from from the build process. If you just slap this on and leave it, everything's gonna get all rusty. This has to be clear coated or painted, um, powder coated. Something has to be done. If you do not do something to it when you get your hands on it, it will rust and look terrible. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do, I'm probably just gonna get some clear coat on it. The craftsmanship in itself is great. So I am not displeased in any way, shape or form. Some people may be, some people might freak out. Oh, I paid, I paid this much money for this and it's, you know, he didn't even take the burrs off it. Look, that's why you're paying a hundred and something dollars less than, than the chrome finished version. Labels it as raw. That's what you're getting. I can't wait to get it in the truck. It's gonna look sick. Forget how it looks though. It's gonna work great. Get a little extra ventilation going, a lot of extra ventilation going in the truck. From what my buddy Trey told me, this won't go all the way 90 degrees out, but he says it gets damn near close to it. I mean, even just even if you were to open the window that much, it would make a world of a difference in in my truck at least. I don't have smoker windows. Uh, it was an AC truck. Used to have working AC. AC still worked when I got it, but it doesn't. And I'm not putting air AC back in that truck ever. I'll get some smoker windows in eventually too. But this this is the key, man. This is gonna make those hot New York summers way more enjoyable because I drive that truck uh, spring through fall every day but, but anyways I mocked this up just to give me an idea of what it's like what it's gonna be like on the truck and I dig it I definitely dig it I can't wait to get this on I don't know when I'll have the time to do it but it doesn't matter because when this gets uploaded it's gonna be installed Cause that's gonna be the rest of this video. First and foremost, this is not a step-by-step. -step. This is just what I experienced putting this in. There is no scientific method to this. This is, aside from Jeremy's prototype, this is the second one to be installed on a truck. So mining carts experiences are about as good as it gets. It's pretty straightforward though. I mean, I just, I don't need people messaging me saying, oh, you know, I can't do this, I can't do that. I tried it this way and now my truck's on fire. It's not rocket surgery, guys. Um, right. I'm trying to get this glass out without damaging the seal, which I don't think is possible. Upon further, further investigation, you have to cut the seal out. Um, I mean, I think you could probably finesse it out, but um, unless it's a new seal, you're not really gonna push these out all too easily, so. Here goes nothing, feels so wrong. Point of no return. It just feels so wrong. This is nerve wracking because I'd say this is the first like major thing I'm doing to this truck where you could say I'm molesting it to the point of no return. 
So make sure you save this for later so you have something to hang yourself with when you fuck this up and break your glass. Oh no. That's what I was afraid of. Finding some rust. We must press on. Maybe I'll I don't know, I know I gotta but I might bust out the welder to weld these tabs in. So I don't know. I might want to uh well no, you know what? I can worry about that later. Cause now the window comes right in and out. I believe the seal pops right in and out, no problem, so you know what? I'm just gonna throw this in so we can make it to madness. I mean I'm going to madness regardless. Oh don't do that. I almost ripped the interior out just now. Oof. See? Alright, I'm gonna clean up these edges and stuff. And then work on peeling back these B pillar covers. See you guys in a bit. You don't want to put the main seal in till last. The truck curves a little more than the frame. So, you'll s anybody who buys this, you'll see this hinge is kind of straight. So you can't just go boom, 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 because then it's going to get sucked over to one side when it conforms to the curve of the truck. So you want to get one on each outer end at the very least and probably one in the middle for good measure, however many you deem fit. But just be, be mindful of that, that the hinge is straighter than the curve of the truck. All right, so being that Garth Trey Hill, you guys probably know him as, you know, he deleted all his social media. So you probably haven't seen his name in a while, but his social media name is Trey. Trey Hill. His name's Garth. Sorry, Garth. Jigs up. Um, Garth is technically the first and only customer to have installed this. So there's no proper how-to. Um, it's all pretty self-explanatory how it mounts up and everything, but the order in which you mount it up is a little confusing and overwhelming at first. Um, but basically this is the way Garth did it and it seems to make the most sense. Uh, get your old window out, prep your surfaces, repair any rust, whatever you gotta do after your old window's out. Then you wanna piece together the top and bottom half of the loose nuts frame and kinda move it around. You'll see you got a little bit of wiggle room all around both forward you know, inward and outward and side to side, up and down. So you kind of want to center it. You don't want the top half near the hinge to be too far out or too far in. Um, so you kind of want to find that sweet spot because the seal's pretty big and you're definitely not going to mock all this up with the main seal in. So again, seal in last. You would mock everything up, bolt everything down and then get the main seal in when you're all done. Um, but the two halves together, you want to kind of line up this top hinge, get at least one on each, one bolt piloted on each end, and then one or two in the middle. And then, uh, then you could go ahead and take off the bottom half of the frame. All right, so according to Garth, this is the fun part. Sorry if you guys get sick of hearing me say according to Garth, but again, no one else has really installed one of these yet, so you're going to hear, probably not the last time you're going to hear according to Garth, getting the inner seal around the glass and then getting the glass and inner seal in the two halves of the frame. I'm guessing this is the best way to do it. Seal around the glass and then scratch your glass. So yeah, this is definitely going to be fun. I just see myself breaking the glass at the end of the day. The top half just slides right on given the shape of it. So I'm, we're going to do the bottom half first. Use tons of soapy water too, because I already started ripping open part of the seal. So.
getting that bottom half sucked. So basically you gotta wrap the seal around the window first and then get this bottom piece on first. Garth put the seam down at the bottom, but I didn't like the idea of that. So I put this, I'm putting the seam up here, you know, so I could trim it for a really nice fit at the seam of the frame. That way I could, you know, pull them apart a little bit, get a razor in there and cut it nice, nice. But uh, yeah, this is a pain just because that bottom half tapers inward. So you kind of, so you basically have to use both your hands and pry the thing apart. Um, I'll show you guys. So I stood it up. It was a lot easier to stand it up and kind of, I was flipping it all over the place. The battery on the camera died and I was uh, too in the zone to stop what I was doing. But basically you're having to pry this open and slip it on. Cause if you try to just force it on, the edges of the frame are gonna tear up that, absolutely destroy that seal. So, um, yeah, that's fun. I actually tore the seal up a little bit during this whole process. I'm not even done yet, so I'm gonna get it together. I'm gonna hit up Jeremy and buy another inner seal and I'll do it again. I think that's the trickiest part of this whole install, so deal with that another day but I've got to change this inner seal again anyways when I do that I'll be able to get a better video for you guys showing the actual process because that's going to be the trickiest part of the install all right so that was a little tricky we got the top half on so, I don't really know how to explain it, but it's going to take you a few tries. The seal doesn't contour the window. It's just one straight piece of seal. As you go to get the male end to the female end, it, the seal will basically stick to the frame and start pulling in. So you got to play around and figure out where to cut it and how much to stretch the seal and how far to pull it out so that this will grab it. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of explaining common sense stuff. Long story short, this thing's a pain in the dick. So, but it's well worth it. So far the fit's great. I gotta finagle the seal a little bit once it, now that it's in, but um, it's pretty fucking sweet. So, all right, I'm gonna get back to finishing this. It's a couple hours later. Stop to eat and whatnot um so i haven't been working straight through if you know what you're doing if you're mechanically savvy it's half a day to do this i'm almost done um i'm just running the seal in cutting it i'm gonna trim it and then i gotta take it back out and tuck all the interior pieces back in and then put the seal in for good Probably something you want to do on a weekend day though and save the whole day for Because uh, I did go to work today. I got out of work about 2.30 came straight home uh, Screwing around a little bit after work and it's now almost 10 o'clock at night So just to give you an idea of how long I've been at it. I've been taking my time. I was fighting the seal Save a whole day for it do it on a weekend day um take your time overall it's money well spent there's no doubt about that in the pictures on Jeremy's website he has these tabs mounted further down here and they do seem to fit a little better there well I think either no matter which way you mount them they are tweaked a bit so I think it it, it all boils down to personal preference how you mount them where I mounted them here I mounted them up higher because you're able to get a little more to open up a little more when you mount them up a little higher. The downside is it comes very close to the headliner when you close it, because when you close it, these swing up. So I'm gonna have to uh, do something about my headliner, but I already checked that before I mounted them here. Um, I'd rather deal with that to be able to get this to open wider. With these tabs being bent, I think it's just something the, the buyer should deal with because 
where people mount it is, is going to be different for everybody. So it's not an exact. The point I'm trying to make is that it's not an exact science. This was the third one he's sold, and he's had them for almost a year and a half now. He's been offering them for about a year and a half, and sold three total. The first one being the prototype. So definitely going to give him some feedback. I'm sure he'll appreciate it. He might make some tweaks. He might not. I don't think he really needs to make any tweaks other than to, other than with these uh, latch receivers. Um, even though I can weld these in, and even, and I was even planning on welding it from the get-go, um, I screwed them in with the self-tappers just to mock everything up for now and get it going, get it ready, deal with it later, weld them into place permanently eventually. While I was trying to figure out how to cut away the interior trim, I said to myself, you know, it's better to just screw these tabs in right over the top of it. Not the best looking. Um, you know, they definitely look better painted, but um, yeah, so I'm just going to stick with leaving the self-tappers in. If they start to pull out or wear out on me, um, yeah, I'll figure out a way to weld them in and make it work with the interior pieces but um yeah i'm putting in this seal now but you want to make sure it's tight in the corners before you trim it um it's better to have too much than to cut it too short then you're shit out of luck you gotta get a new seal um but i trimmed i trimmed it maybe three or four times last night to get it nice and snug in there but definitely when you're mocking it up to cut it, make sure it's in snug on the corners. When you're doing the final install, it definitely helps to have a hammer or something to hit the seal up into place with. Don't go crazy, don't go mashing it because there's a strip of metal in there, as most of you know. And uh, you don't want to go trashing that metal. But uh, yeah, I'm going to finish putting this seal in. Once I'm all done, I'll do a little walk around with the camera and give you guys a closer look at everything. So, yeah, that, uh, these B pillar panels, just like the back of this, have to wrap over that edge. And the window seal holds that all in place. That goes all the way around. The B pillars in the back panel uh, fit like that. Again, if your truck doesn't have this, doesn't apply to you, obviously. But, like I said, I was screwing these in just to get me going and planning on later, planning on welding them later down the line. But then as I was trying to fit this up, I realized rather than, rather than cut this uh, vinyl stuff and risk hacking it up and making it fall apart, um, I just decided to screw it right over the top. So I took it all back apart, laid all the pan, all the trim back in, and then uh, just drilled those self-tappers right through it. This gives you an idea of what it looks like. Open. It is super important that you do not cut this too short. I mean, that's common sense, but just to give you an idea of how much room you have to play with, you can see here I've got, I have almost two inches of extra seal. Everything is pressed in up to here, and I've got this much extra. Uh, now, you can sh you can basically shove that much in. That's how forgiving and uh, pliable, I don't know what the right word is, but that's how forgiving this seal is. See, basically shove all that in there. I might take it out and cut, cut it down a little bit. I gotta see how the window seals before I go cutting any more out of it, but um, I personally feel like having a bit extra sh forced in there is better for the winter um, and you know with the weather changes it may shrink or expand so I know over time seals tend to shrink and crack and uh, sh shrivel up so I'd rather have a little extra shoved in there for that in, in that sense either this is just my experience of installing this kit so don't don't take this for a step-by-step guaranteed this is how you do it, walk through. You know, I don't need anybody sending me messages. Hey, you know, this didn't work out for me because uh, I can't do things. So this is what it looks like closed. With 
one seat back, both seats. This gives you an idea what you got for room after, where the latches sit, where the slides sit. Um, as I mentioned last night, I chose to mount these up higher. The downside is that it comes close and hits the headliner, but I'm gonna trim that back. I'm not worried about that. The benefit of mounting these brackets higher is I was able to get the window to open further. So I'd rather give up that to get a little more reach with the window. That's that guys. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask away. More than glad to more than glad to help. This kit's well worth the money.